Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all of fishing boats at sea. I'm Bruce Ellis, and this is the Insider Report. So sit back, relax, and let your ears do the walking as I fill you in on what's going on in the area this weekend and beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. And, uh, well, hey, it's only fair. Uh, Kat and Jason did the show last week because I was out because of the events that we did that weekend. (laughs) So this week I'm all by myself. Kat's away. She's helping out Jason. And, uh, yeah, so she's gone. So it's all me all alone in here. But, hey, speaking of last weekend, oh, my gosh, Sky High, 4th of July, the Slamming Salmon. Chrissy and I, like, we were really happy. Everybody showed up. It was a big event, really huge. Bunch of crowds and everything came in and saw it, and it was a blast. And and me and Junior, we got, I don't know if Facebook friends out there saw it, but me and Junior got into the spirit of things. It was funny because I have a pair of workout pants that are old red, white, and blue, you know, the Star Spangled Banner, you know, they're they're patriotic <laughs> to say the least and i was sitting looking at those and I'm like i'm gonna wear those on fourth of July. then i looked and i was like well if i'm gonna have them i need to get junior a pair so i ordered him a pair of that and then i was like well if we're gonna do the pants we might as well do the shirts so i ordered a couple red white and blue shirts and then i go oh man we gotta wear hats you know so might as well get some hats so i got the cool <laughs> eagle hats red white and blue and then I got some fanny packs for us because the workout pants do not have pockets in them, really, per se. And so uh, we ended up getting the whole nine yards. We walked around, and yeah, we were very colorful, to say the least. And we got people were taking pictures of us <laughs> just because we were like the, yeah, most patriotic people there, I'm sure, are looking, I should say. Yeah, yeah, we were we were dressed to the tees. And then the next day, you know, started the slamming salmon, and we had that for three days. And I, I got to thinking, and, and even somebody mentioned to me, they go, well, hey, well, where's your salmon outfit? I'm like going, you know, I was thinking the same thing. So next year, I'm going to have to figure out some shirts or something and, uh, yeah, do a little salmon-themed thing. But I got on it with the Bigfoot Blues Fest that's coming up, so I'm going to be ready. Me and Junior are going to be ready for that one. <laughs> we're, we're planning on that one. So, yeah, that's that was a fun time. And then I just was working on the paper and everything, just kind of, after we do a four-day especially event like that, because it means really five or six days involved in getting everything chalked up at the port and blah, blah, blah. So that's quite a few days. It's a week of going to it. And uh, I'm a little exhausted afterwards, and I had to work on the paper and everything, so I kind of relaxed that week and did stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Kind of enjoyed this last weekend, watching the race and everything, but back at it again. And like I said, I'm all alone So before we get going here, I hope you all had a good time. Hope you had fun this last weekend. I got some more stuff to talk about here coming up. So uh, we got a whole lot of stuff still going on in July. But before we get going, I'd like to thank the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, just the jeweler and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. If you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows out there, all you got to do is go to kciw.org and you will be on your way. So first thing we're going to get started off with is music schedule. So happening at Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center, we've got on the 26th, Jason Aldean Tribute, 8 p.m. Doors open at 7 p.m. Then in the Warriors Bar and Grill, music is at 7. On the 19th and 20th, they got Steve Berg. And on the 26th and the 27th is Jesse Mead. And then Cisco will be playing on the 20th and the 27th at the Brickings Harbor Farmer's Market, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Travel Oregon Welcome Center is starting to have events. They've been doing that for the past months. Very cool. Events start at 2 p.m. On the 20th, they got Danielle Duran and Mark McDonald. That's a guitar and vocalist. And then on the 27th, we got C.R. Taylor, which is an acoustic guitar and vocals. And then the Italian guys, forget about it. They're playing on the 18th at Kuntai at 6 p.m. The Mighty Steelheads are playing on the 20th at the Relay for Life in Crescent City at the Mike Whalen Field from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then on the 27th, they'll be at Pops at 7.30 p.m. And then P.A. and T. Roy on the 26th, they'll be playing at the Elks Lodge from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we got Lon Goddard. He's going to be playing on the 18th at the Brian Scott Gallery Brown Bag at lunch, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. On the 19th, he'll be at Misty Mountain Bruin from 6 to 8. And then on the 24th, he'll be at Kuntai, 6 to 8. 
Then we got Mike Powell out there jamming. On the 28th, he'll be at Augustino's Estate and Vineyards, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Then he'll be at Chetco Brewing Company on the 26th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then we got Disturbing the Peace. They will be jamming it up at the Del Norte Golf Course on the 26th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then at Inateca going on, we got on the 19th, Dog Park Monday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. On the 20th, we got the Italian guys, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. On the 26th, we got Tequilma, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And on the 27th, we got the Shark Tones, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's what's going on at Inateca in Crescent City. And then we got a lot of stuff going on here. Our Check Hill Library schedule is just crazy. They're doing all kinds of stuff. This year's summer reading program, Explore Your World, is running through August 15th. In addition to their classic reading challenges for fun prizes, this year's program offers weekly special events on Thursday afternoons for youth and families through the first week of August. You can grab reading challenge cards for both kids and adults at the front desk whenever the library is open. And they got a list of weekly events here on Tuesdays. At 11 a.m., it's story time. Stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. Then at 1.30 p.m., they got the chair yoga class. It's on Tuesdays. Then on Fridays, they got at 4 p.m., Ora del Quinto, stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. And then they've got some special events also going on, July 23rd, 5.30 p.m. It's game night at Chetco Brewing Company. This is an open game night featuring games from the Chetco Library's board game collection, hosted at Chetco Brewing Company on Railroad Street. Try a game from their library or bring one of your favorites. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in your community, with plenty of table space to spread out. Kids are welcome, but they must be accompanied by an adult guardian. Game night happens every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then the book club's going on there on the 18th, 3 p.m. They got the summer reading, Quest for Kakapo, an entertaining educational animal play presented by the Traveling Lantern Theater Company. Youth and families of all ages are welcome. That's on the 18th at 3 p.m. On the 18th, also at 5.30 p.m., they got the Pub Grub Book Club. This casual book club is for adult fans of graphic novels and takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Brewing in downtown Brookings. Then on the 27th, 2 p.m., they got Roll for Reading. This fantasy book club is geared towards older teens and adults and meets every other month. On the 20th at 2 p.m., they got the Mario Kart Tournament. Join Volunteer D for an open Mario Kart tourney in the library's forest room. Youth, teen, or adult gamers of all ages are invited to compete. Then on the 24th at 1 p.m., they got a free art workshop with Tori. Join volunteer and local artist Tori for a free hands-on art workshop. Materials are provided. This workshop is geared towards adult artists and crafters. And then on the 25th, well, they got a whole lot going on. 25th at 3 p.m., they got the summer reading, the watershed game. You can join Miranda Gray, a water resources specialist, to play the watershed game and learn more about our local ecosystems. Youth and families of all ages are welcome. On the 25th at 4 p.m., that's the Lego Club. Lego builders and enthusiasts of all ages are invited to a free open building session in the library's youth section. And then on the 26th and 27th at 10 a.m., they got the Claymation Workshop. Teens and adults are invited to join Eric in the library makerspace to learn the basics of claymation filmmaking. And last but not least, on July 31st, 3 p.m., they got a teen summer reading party. Teens and preteens are invited to a casual afternoon of games, crafts, snacks, and music. All library-led programs and events are free to attend, whether or not you have a library card. For more info, you can visit checkcolibrary.org or follow them on Facebook, or you can call 541-469-7738. Hey, and now it's time for some famous quotes with Cousin Bruce. Here we go. Here are a few quotes from author and naturalist Henry David Thoreau, he was born July 12, 1817. He says, to affect the quality of the day, that is the highest of arts. It's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. And if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. 
And last but not least, it is not enough to be busy. So are the ants. The question is, what are we busy about? That's right. Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Henry David Thoreau with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. That's right. Very good stuff. The ants are busy too, but what are we doing? Hey, children's event at Trinity Church, 1200 Easy Avenue, is Vacation Bible School Christmas in July. This is happening on the 15th through the 19th, 9 a.m. to noon. This is for children up to 6th grade. There will be games, songs, play, crafts, fun. It's free to all participants, and they want you to register. So you go to www.ticbrookings.org, www.ticbrookings.org, or you can call 541-469-3411. Yeah. Now, here we go. Another one. We got the Bigfoot Blues Fest, another insider of Southern Oregon event. We just got done with the last one, so we got to have a couple weeks in between. But the Bigfoot Blues Fest is going to be happening on the 27th and 28th. That's Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., it's Blues on the Boardwalk. Local vendors, food, beer garden, live music, kids' activities, blues for everyone. And as I said, it'll be on the boardwalk at the Port of Brookings Harbor. 27th and 28th. Hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce, that crazy guy. Right. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that a count claimed to be immortal? It's true. And here's the story. Is it possible that a man can achieve immortality to live forever? That is a startling claim of a historical figure known as Count de Saint-Germain. Records date his birth to the late 1600s, although some believe that his longevity reaches back to the time of Christ. He has appeared many times throughout history, even as recently as the 1970s, always appearing to be about 45 years old. He was known by many of the most famous figures of European history, including Casanova, Madame de Pompadour, Voltaire, King Louis, Catherine the Great, Anton Mesmer, and many others. Saint-Germain traveled extensively throughout Europe over the next 40 years, and in all that time never seemed to age. Those who met him were impressed by his abilities and peculiarities. He was a virtuoso with a violin, an accomplished painter, and most importantly, an alchemist, among other traits, that he had learned presumably over his long life. Well, in 1779, he went to Hamburg, Germany, where he befriended Prince Charles of Hesse Castle. For the next five years, he lived as a guest in the Prince's Castle at Eckenford, and according to local records, that is where St. Germain died on February 27, 1784. For an ordinary mortal, that would be the end of the story, but not for Count de Saint Germain. He would continue to be seen throughout the 19th century and even into the 20th century. The most recent appearance of a man claiming to be Saint Germain was in 1972 in Paris when a man named Richard Chanfrey announced he was the legendary Count. He appeared on French television and to prove his claim apparently turned lead into gold on a camp stove before the cameras. Well, Chanfrey later committed suicide in 1983. So, who was Count Saint Germain? Was he a successful alchemist who found the secret of eternal life? Was he a time traveler? Or is he a highly intelligent man whose reputation became a fantastic legend? I wonder if he's related to Keith Richard. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this week's bit of weird history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. <laughs>
doing the Relay for Life one year there. Uh, yeah, I was sponsored. I, I dressed up as a woman. That was me. That's right. The, uh, I mean, my sister is beautiful. I don't know how come I was such an ugly woman, but yeah, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> I went and had a, one of the local beauty salons do the wig, do my hair up, do my makeup up. Man, it didn't matter. It was like, yeah, you, you know, you could put ribbons on a warthog and it still ain't going to be pretty. So there we go. <laughs> I was not a very attractive woman, that's for sure. So <laughs> anyways, that was my story and I'm sticking to it. You can see those fa pictures on Facebook too. Hey, the fourth annual Yurok Arts and Crafts Fair is happening on the 20th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Del Norte County Fairgrounds. The Arts and Crafts Fair aims to celebrate and showcase the rich artistic talents within the Europe community and other Native groups. The event is open to all. Now, there is no vendor fee, and there are 30 available spaces for those interested in participating. For additional information or to sign up as a vendor, you can contact Mickey Moon at mmais at urochtribe.nsn.us. That's mmais at Yurok tribe.nsn.us Hey, and then Wild River Dance is presenting a Make a Puppet Day. This is happening on the 22nd through the 25th. This is for ages 3 to 5 at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then ages 6 and up at 10.15 a.m. to 11.15. There is a fee, so you just gotta check out Wild River Dance. South Coast Humane Society is presenting the Furball 2024. This will be happening at the Brookings Elks Lodge, July 27th, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. There's dinners, cocktails, dancing, costume contests, live auction, silent auction, and much more. Uh, it's sold out, but you can check as it nears because, you know, hey, sometimes them cancellations come in and you might be able to get on board. For info and times, you can call 760-521-3200. And then the Curry Public Library, located at 94341 Third Street in Gold Beach, is presenting the Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry will meet the third Wednesday of every month from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for this program, you can email them at memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A memory cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, and library staff, and or volunteers. All right, hey, we still got that series going on here at KCIW. It's a KCIW Soapbox Series. What is a soapbox series, you might ask? Well, KCIW is giving folks a chance to speak their mind and say what they got to say. Basically, KCIW is offering two minutes of air time to anyone who has something to say. There are a few rules, of course. No cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks can share what's on their mind. The studio is open every Wednesday from 2 to 3 for people to come in and record. And so if you got something, yeah, you want to talk about, you know, yeah. Say, shout it out. It can be positive or negative, I imagine. So a positive is always a wonderful thing. So, hey, come on in and check out the Soapbox series at KCIW. Hey, then we got game night at the Whimsical Griffin. This is located at 615 Chepco Avenue right next to the Redwood Theater. Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., they got Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, board games, and a lot more. And then we got the Meals on Wheels is looking for volunteers. Meals on Wheels are in need of volunteer drivers. They deliver about 75 hot meals daily to seniors that can't get to the Checker Activity Center for the daily meals served there. They have a harbor route and a Brookings route. It's the perfect opportunity for anyone out there that wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face to deliver a hot meal, a little kindness to our local seniors. And they say whether you're interested in doing a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. And I rewrote this. She sent me some more info and everything. You know what? As Debbie was saying, they just need volunteers. Even if it's just one day a month, one day a week, whatever you can offer, they just need some help down there big time. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to make you feel good. 
It's going to make you feel good inside. You're helping a fellow human being out. And I mean, yeah, it's just a wonderful thing that's going on there. And if you're interested in helping out, you can contact Debbie Lutz at 714-423-9797. You contact Debbie and she'll set you up. And it'll be a wonderful thing you're doing for the community and for somebody out there that, hey, everybody's, you know, they can't to get to the food. So the food's got to come to them. And then we got Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Always, boys and girls are invited. It's a lot different than when I was a kid, that's for sure. So Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they're over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and are willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at Scout Hall uh, 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can meet the troops and learn more about what the scouts are doing by visiting Scout Hall at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brookings. If you want to call Troop 32, Scoutmaster is Mark Haglin. That's 541-661-2749. And then we got Troop 4032, which is Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson. at 707-951-3647. Like I said, boys and girls are, are invited. And uh, yeah, it's, hey, I'm waiting until Junior. He's got one more year to go, and then he'll be in the fifth grade. And I'm going to tell you what, me and him are going to be going down there and I'm going to hook him up as a scout, and I'm going to be a volunteer so we can go have some fun. Do I remember it when I was a kid, and it was a blast. I loved it. It was a good time. I, in fact, I was a Cub Scout, too. Yeah, my parents were a den mother and den father. So, yeah, yeah I could never get away from them, man. They had me everywhere. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, it was really cool, though. I enjoyed the scouts. Fun times. Hey, and Fog and Fine Art Gallery. This is located in Wright's Custom Framing and Art Supply at 810 Chaco Avenue in Brookings. The gallery features 36 local artists in a variety of mediums and classroom to inspire new and seasoned artists with workshops. They invite you to stop by and enjoy all that's new in the gallery, open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. For more information on class offerings, painting demonstrations, and artists, you can call 541-469-7900, or you can visit them on Facebook at Wright's Custom Framing. And then we got the Brookings MS Self Help Support Group, Conversation and Support for People Living with MS, Multiple Sclerosis. You can join others living with MS to talk, share experiences of successfully living and coping daily with MS, share information and resources in a positive atmosphere. Topics will focus on areas of interest to the group members. This group is for people with MS, family, friends, and caregivers. They ask that you please reach out prior to attending with an email to AudreyMS18 at AOL.com. You can find them on Facebook at MS Walk and Rollers. The meetings will be the second Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. This is at the Checo Community Library Annex Building across the street from the library, 402 Alder Street in Brookings. And then we've got the community kitchen schedule. Mondays, they're at St. Timothy's, 11 a.m. to noon for brunch. On Tuesdays, they're at St. Timothy's, noon to 1. Wednesdays, at the Star of the Sea Catholic Church, noon to 1. Thursdays, the Presbyterian Church, noon to 1. Fridays, the Lutheran Church, noon to 1. The first, third, and fifth Saturdays, St. Timothy's, noon to 1. And then the second and fourth Saturdays, the Church of Nazarene, noon to 1. And then Sundays, back at St. Timothy's, 3 to 4. You can also find the community kitchen schedule at kciw.org. And if you're out there and you just heard me give that report and it's messed up or whatever because I keep getting people to let me know when it's in the paper and I change it in the paper and I change it on here, but it changes once in a while and then I don't hear about it for a couple months. So if you're out there, then please, uh, yeah, let me know. And... Uh, yeah, if you got an event out there also, we got a few more minutes here. If you got an event going on out there and you wanted to get it on the radio and also possibly in the Insider of Southern Oregon Entertainment newspaper, I got two venues there for you to promote your stuff. All you got to do is send me the info to uh, captaincurry 541 at gmail.com. And also, if you're a musician out there, you want to get your band on the air or announced on the air where you're playing at, or you want it in the Insider, I've got a music schedule in there as well. 
If you send me your info, I will get you on the air and in the paper. No problemo. You just got to send me the dates and times and where you're playing at and all that good stuff, and uh, I will get it on for you. That's how we roll around here. So, hey, it's been fun, everybody. I can't wait till Cat gets back next week. <laughs> Always, I mean, when I first started this radio show, oh, my gosh, doing it for, I don't know, almost 10 years now, I guess. But with the first three years, I was doing it by myself. And I got used to doing it weekly. But, boy, now I got spoiled with a co-host. But, yeah, she'll be back next week. And we'll be back in the saddle again and uh, rolling it out as Cat and Bruce. No problem giving you the scoop. Now it's time to close out this week's show. Before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for the great work of making us look and sound good on the radio. Mom always said I had a face for radio. And I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. Please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. And while you're there, you can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report by going to kciw.org, and while you're there, you can check out the live streaming as well. Well, till next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. I'm signing off. Please support local businesses. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll see you out there. Bam! Use the credits for the preceding show, go to kciw.org slash credits.